Hi again, let's continue with this with this parse project here. And uh, in the last video, we created a form here for comments. And if you click on a post title, it should display the post in detail form here above the comment field. And you know, you can type a comment in there and submit it. It won't do anything yet, but uh, you know, if I inspect the comment field here, it's going to show me the ID for the post here and under the form right here the ID is also in the um, the hidden field right so this is the input field type hidden and then there's our post ID again and so now we're in good shape so that when we click submit we'll add a function that gathers the data out of the form field here grabs the data from the hidden field and then creates a new post in the comment table over here okay so let's give that a try and uh, here's what we'd like to do so let's examine our our form again let me find it um, there it is right so here's the form we're using and the fields well the form itself is post comment form the hidden input field is post comment ID the text area here is post comment, okay? And uh, then uh, the, the submit button, we don't really need for anything, but that's post comment submit. Let's make sure we didn't use this name post comment anywhere else, right? Oh yeah, create a post, it says uh, post content, right? So that's okay, we can call this one post comment, right? Okay, so uh, let's scroll down here to our JavaScript. And I'll just add a new function up at the top here, okay? And we'll want to refactor our code later. We're just using this as sort of a playground to, you know, experiment with parse and with the parse ideas and get some of the, you know, basic functionality that we want to use with parse happening on a web page live. And then we can kind of prove that it works and see how, what the, you know, what the mechanics are. And then we can move this into or modify this to, to make a real website, right? So the first thing we need to do is I want to um, create a jQuery function that will handle this form submission. So I'll move this so I can see the form up here. You know, maybe that'll help, right? It says post comment form. Well, let's type that in here, right? And what we're looking for is a submit on that form. So I'll say, okay, when, when you submit that form, We'll handle that with this function right here. And our function can receive an event object, so we'll type event in here. And what we want to do is we want to use the event object to prevent the default behavior of the form. And we're doing that because submitting the form will refresh the page, and we don't want the page to refresh. So we'll, we'll put this in here to prevent that. And then the next thing um, we'll do is we'll collect the data from the form. So we need the ID from the hidden field. So we'll get that. We'll just call it, how about let's call it post ID, right? And we'll say, uh, we'll call that post comment ID. And then to get the value from the hidden field, you just use val. Next, we'll get the comment here from the text area. So we'll call this, you know, how about post comment. Actually, let's do it this way with the, with the uppercase C, right? And then this is going to be post comment like that. And then again, um, we can get this with val. And, uh, and then that's pretty good. So, so now that we've got the, the data from the form, let's take a quick look back at our, at our table here, right? And the table that we've created, and even if you haven't created it, our code will create it. So, you know, if you don't even have this, remember parse will create that if it doesn't exist. But this is what we want to create. We want to create a table that contains a content as a string, that'll be the, the comment that you typed into the field. 
and then it will have a user attached to it. So this is the user that submitted this comment. And then it'll have a post object attached to it too, saying this is the post that the user commented on. So that way we can associate comment with post and comment with user, okay? So you'll notice comment or content for the comment is just a string and user and post are both pointers to other tables that we have. So the user field here points to the user table and the post field points to the post table. Okay, so if you comment on, you know, post number 32 or something and, you know, then we'll know that that that, that post has this comment. And there might be multiple posts that comment on this, on that particular, or mul multiple comments that comment on that particular post. And, you know, they might be posted by different users, right? So that way we can pull up all the comments for one user or pull up all the comments for one post and then we can look at the user, you know, to find out who posted what, okay? So uh, <clears throat> so anyway, so we're, we're kind of set up here. And the thing we need to do now is so far we have the, the ID for the post and we have the text for the content, but we don't have a user yet, okay? So, so far, here's what we have, and we've got the ID for the post, which is this, and then we've got the content for the comment, which is going to go into the content field, okay? So now we need to get um, the user. So let's make a variable for user, and if you recall, you can always just say parse.user.current to get the current user. So that gets our current user, and um, and this this we should probably put some te some you know uh, error checking or some kind of check in here because if you're not logged in, then this is going to return an undefined or a null or something, right? It's going to say like, you know, you're not logged in, so there is no current user, and, and in that case, maybe we don't want to allow people to comment because they would be commenting anonymously, right? And maybe that's okay. Uh, but maybe not. I mean, I'm leaving that out for now, but we can come back and kind of address that later. Maybe maybe if you're not logged in, we don't want to show the comment form at all. We just want to show a, a button that says, you know, uh, sign up or log in if you want to comment, right? But for right now, just to show the concept, um, we'll, we'll just have it set up this way to keep things simple, okay? So anyway, so we've got our post, we've got our comment, we've got our user. Now, one thing is, if we have a, a, a pointer, we need an actual object, like a, a parse object to assign to that field. We can't just assign a string. So the user object is acceptable. It will be the user object and that will work as a pointer. The post ID at this stage is just a string. It's just the value that came out of this field. So we need to convert this into an object with this ID and then we can use that, you know, that will satisfy the, 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 the requirement that this, of, of the pointer field, right? So let's make another variable. We'll call this, um, let's just call it post, right? And to make the post here, we're going to make a brand new post object. Oops. Okay, so we're making one of these objects here. And as a, we, could, we could do set too. We could say, you know, post.set and we could set properties on it. But as sort of, since we're just doing something simple here, you're also allowed to set properties by including an object here and naming all the properties that you want to set. It's sort of a shortcut. And the property we want to set is ID. So here we're going to create a brand new post object where the ID is the post ID you know, from the field. Okay, so this is a brand new post object and the ID is going to be the ID of, you know, of that post that's that's currently in the detail view. Okay, so now this we can put into the, um, the, the, the post field here, which is a pointer, right? So that's, that'll be acceptable here, okay? So now we need to make a comment, okay? So the comment is going to be an object like this parse object here, this post object, except it's going to be type comment, right? Let's actually move that down again and we'll look at it. Right, so here's our 
our comment field there. Let me actually go down a little bit lower, right? So there's our comment class or comment table, right? And what I want to do is create a new variable. And I like to define these guys at the top because we reuse them. So I'll define the class up here and we'll call it comment. So we'll just name it the same thing we have here. And then we'll say parse object extend comment. Now, what's key is this value here, this string, if we're going to match one of the tables that exists here, the name has to be the same. If we spell this differently, parse will create a brand new table. You know, everything should still function, but it'll create a new table with this new spelling. So, um, you know, since I've already created the table, I'll put this here and I'll make sure that they match. And if you haven't created this table, then you don't have to worry about it. You can just spell this however you like. You know, ideally, you know, if we follow a pattern, it'll be easier for us. So, you know, I'm always naming the class names here for the tables with an uppercase letter and then the, the column names here with lowercase letters, right? So here's our new class and we can create new comment objects from that class. So let's do that. Let's say var comment equals new comment, okay? And we could actually set this up by, you know, putting the curly brackets here and saying, you know, content colon, right? And, you know, but that would be kind of long and it would all be on one line and that might work for some people. So, uh, and that's fine. You can go ahead and do that just like we did here. But I think I'm just going to set all of the properties each on their own line, okay? With set. And that'll just make it clearer and maybe easier to read right here. So I'll say comment set. And what I want to set is the content. So I'll put the name of the column here. And for me, the, the content is going to be this post comment. Okay. And then we'll say comment dot set. And next we want to set the user. So we'll say user and you know, our user is the currently logged in user. So we'll just type in user here. We could have actually just put parse.user.current in this spot, but since I did everybody else as a variable, I did that one as a variable too, right? You know, either way would work. You know, hopefully it, the more you practice with this, I'm hoping that you'll start to see your own, you know, ways of doing things. Cause there's lots of different ways to arrange the code here that end up with the same result. Um, so next, I've got comment set, and what I want to do is set the post. So this is the post object that we created. So we'll say post here, and then we'll put the post variable right here. So we got post and post, right? And there we're set. So um, the last step is to say comment dot save, okay? And that should save a new comment to our table. And if you like, you can include success as a function, right? Comma, error as a function, okay? And let me arrange this code here a little bit. Um, and there we go, right? So I've got uh, my success. And let's, let's put a console log message in here. And I don't have any code that I want to run right now. We'll just put that message in there. And, you know, in the future, when we display the comments, we'll probably want to update the comment display after we add a new comment. So that'll happen here, right? If you successfully post a comment, then we'll update the, the display, right? And maybe right here... You know, we sure, for sure want to know if there's an error. So I'll type comment. Oops, we got to make sure we include the error object here, right? Okay, so I got to have error there. And uh, right here, we'll say, you know, comment save error. 
and then we'll do error dot message. Okay, I think actually I, I, I think I made an error here. <laughs> I made an error on the error. Um, this when you do a, a save, the success function returns the object that you saved, right? And the error returns the object that you were saving, and then it includes the error as the second parameter. And that's a little that's for me that's the most conf confusing thing about this is some of these you know success and error functions take a different set of parameters right they're just arranged a little bit differently but anyway I, th I think this one is arranged like this right it's got the object and then the error message so let's save that and then we'll see what happens so uh, we'll save it here let me refresh my page let's pull up the console here oh no errors yet so we're doing okay let's click on one of the posts to load that post up here there's our post and now let's add a comment to this post. Let's say um, commenting on geo post. Okay. And then we'll submit. Oh, look, it says comment saved. Let's go to parse here and um, let's refresh the comment table. Oh, look, there's our comment. So if this is working correctly, you know, this says comment on geo. I'm going to assume that the rest of that is the correct text. And then the user was our current user, right? And we have our, our page set up to display the username here. So the current user is called test. So if I click on this, it should take me to the test user over here, right? So I'll click on that. And there's user test. So that's working, right? Let's go back. And then the post we posted, you know, or that we, that we, um, the, the, the post that we commented on is this post called post geo, right? So if we click on this, this post ID right here, that should take us, this pointer should point to the post here called post geo. So let's click on that. Oh, and there's post geo. So I, I think it's working. Um, right now it's not displaying all of the comments, but we'll add that as a feature later. I, I made this post geo because and these geo ones because I was I was playing around with Parse's geolocation feature. You know, if you want to map something, Parse can save the geolocation in the database, and they have some functions that work with that. So I thought that was a really interesting idea. So maybe I'll cover that in an earlier in a later video, and uh, you know, and and we can talk about that too. Um, so anyway, so there we go. I think that was pretty successful for right now. Um, thanks for watching.